WVTT is the news station that brings you news and information that you can depend on. We are first, fast, and accurate, bringing you the only local television news in the Twin Tiers. WVTT, depend on it. Partly cloudy overnight as we take our first look at weather here on WVTT. Low temperature 29 degrees. I know, and it looks like we could be seeing a warm up this weekend, Jeff. Yeah, can you imagine a high of 56 on Saturday? That's the severe weather action team forecast that will have complete weather details coming up here on WVTT. Now, WVTT. The Muslim Brotherhood has strengthened its position in the Egyptian government following the latest government reshuffle in Cairo. Eight of the 35 ministers now come from the Islamist group, and that's sure to lead to an increase in political tensions, according to opposition. There's also a rise in gun violence. CNN's Ian Lee in Cairo has more. Gunfire outside the presidential palace in Cairo last December. A fight between opponents and supporters of President Mohamed Morsi. Business owner Saeed Ali witnessed the chaos unfold. Reports from that night say both sides were shooting at each other. I saw lots of people from the protest side uh, down, lots of injuries. I saw with my own eyes uh, more than six uh, passed away. Since the revolution two years ago, Ali is increasingly concerned about the security situation. I have, uh, I have this gun. This is the, the, the one I use. This is mine on, on my license. And I have uh, the shotgun as well. It's on my license. He's not the only one. Egypt is awash in guns, and Egyptian security officials say serious gun crime is on the rise. People are um, eagerly, they want to buy guns uh, due to the political instability that the, that the country is having right now. Brothers Khaled and Ahmed El Baroudi are among the few licensed gun dealers in Egypt. They deal in pistols and shotguns, and they're not cheap. These firearms range from five to $30,000. A single bullet is about $5. It's hard to own a gun legally in Egypt. You need a clean criminal record, extensive background checks, and a valid reason. And even then, you might be denied a permit. Out of 10,000 applicants last month, roughly 1,000 were approved. The bad thing here is that some people who are unable to get a license can seek the black market, for example, just for protection. Criminals are also taking advantage of cheaper illegal guns. In addition, Egypt's revolution created a security vacuum, with some policemen still reluctant to go back to work. The conflict in Libya flooded Egypt with weapons ranging from Kalashnikovs to RPGs. Homemade guns are also on the rise. For those who want to obey the law and can't get a license, there are alternatives. This is the most popular gun in Egypt, and while it looks real and sounds real, it's not. It's a sound gun. And because you don't need a permit to own one of these things, they're flying off the shelves. For those who can own a gun, like Ali, he hopes the day never comes when he has to draw it. If you're going to shoot, you shoot with, 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 with uh, the, this, this gun, you know, a bullet in, in somebody and that's it, he's, he's dead. I definitely, I'd rather use this at the first. If, if, I'm, if I'm in need for this, I'm going to use this. Egyptian officials continue to work to secure the country and curb illegal firearms. But some Egyptians believe the only real security is the one on your hip. Ian Lee, CNN, Cairo. The rape case in Steubenville, Ohio, has captured the nation's attention. That's thanks to an activist hacker group. But as Gary Tuckman reports, that attention is hurting the people who say they're innocent. Hundreds of people over the weekend gathering in downtown Steubenville, Ohio. Emphasizing the world is watching, they want everyone to know they think the Steubenville High School football culture is not worthy of more protection than a teenage rape victim. In the crowd, people with masks, the masks of Anonymous, the increasingly well-known internet subculture collective that's leading the attack on the Steubenville High School students who may have raped a 16-year-old girl and the handful of bystanders they believe who did nothing to stop it. This is one of the people at the forefront of the attack campaign. He goes by the initials KY. We're not really the judge nor the jury, but 
it's fair to say that we are the executioner. Like I said, they incriminated themselves by posting that information online. They took part in criminal activities. And if you think that they're guilty, that's because your conscience is telling you that they are guilty. But you're saying you're the executioner. What I'm saying is in this country, a jury of your peers or a judge needs to say you're guilty. And you're already kind of saying that, aren't you? I am already kind of saying it. Like I said, they incriminated themselves. There's clear-cut evidence. And a jury of their peers is what they're entitled to. And are we not their peers? This is some of what KY is referring to. A picture showing the two rape suspects carrying the alleged victim was spread all over the internet after it was reposted by Anonymous. And so was this video of a former Steubenville High School baseball player and others making vile jokes about the girl. Hey, what if that was your daughter? But it isn't. What? If that was my daughter, I wouldn't care. I'd just let her be dead. <laughs> While two Steubenville High School football players have been charged with rape, Anonymous has posted names on the internet of many more members of the team many of whom Anonymous says saw what happened to the alleged victim that night. Everyone who witnessed that is just as guilty as the people who did it. Eddie Wilson and Geno Atkins play football for the Steubenville High Big Red. Wilson said he wasn't at any of the parties and witnessed nothing, but says those who follow Anonymous's information assumed he was involved. They put my like information out there and said, I'm involved in this rape case. I'm like one of the ringleaders. I wasn't even at the party or involved in any of this. Wilson says he's now getting death threats from unknown people on the internet. They sent me a picture on Twitter and they, there was a group of bullets on a piece of paper and they singled one shot out and said, this bullet is for Eddie. Anonymous stands by its posting of names and doubles down by saying this. We believe that multiple people have participated in the rape other than the two that were charged. Both football players are outraged by Anonymous's posting of names, saying they feel attacked by outsiders because of the team they play for but they have different opinions about the allegation of rape against their two teammates. We asked Atkins if he felt they were guilty. No, not at all. But Wilson is more circumspect. If they're found guilty, they need to um, serve prison time. If they're found innocent, they need to be let go. For its part, Anonymous is not going to let go. All that's necessary for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. Like it or not, Anonymous is staying on the case. Gary Tuckman, CNN, Steubenville, Ohio. The Consumer Electronics Show, that's the big one, kicked off in Las Vegas today. Among the technologies on display, what could be the next big thing in the world of TV, 3D televisions that don't require special glasses? Adrian Covert joins us in Las Vegas with a look. When 3D TV was first introduced a few years ago, it was seen as the future of television. One of the things that's been holding it back are the annoying glasses you have to wear on your face. Now, Vizio is working on technology that'll let you toss it. Glassless 3D TV is still a prototype, but you can stand in any of nine different positions and get the 3D effect. This is something that's never been done before with glasses 3D technology. So what you see here in the demo is, is a glassless 3D 55-inch TV. Um, and what's different than over previous years is that the sweet spots are very big. Um, and when you're not in a sweet spot, when you're in one of those in-between areas, you still actually have very good picture quality. With prototype displays that have existed in the past, um, if you stood anywhere outside of the sweet spot, you were getting almost a double vision of the 3D. Another cool thing about this is because it is a 4K display, the 3D content comes through in full 1080p video. For true cinephiles and video nerds, it provides a smoother, clearer picture. We always focus on streaming as one of the, the primary use models. And as you get to 4K or ultra high def, uh, the file sizes are getting pretty big. Mm -hmm. But as file sizes get bigger and resolutions get bigger, compression seems to get better. But you may not see this anytime soon. I would guess that you're still looking about a year, maybe two years away for mass adoption with some products coming out maybe towards the end of this year. It's earnings season on Wall Street. How did the stock market do? A down day as we take a look at the WVTT Wall Street wrap up. It's brought to you by News Radio 96.7 WVTT. The Dow down a little over 55 points, closing at 13,329. NASDAQ down seven, closing at uh, just under 3092. And a drop of almost five in the SP 500, closing at 1457. Coming up on Twin Tiers Evening News, WVTT Sports. We'll also take a look at what's happening in the community with the WVTT community calendar and meteorologist Jim Rinaldi calling for that big uptick in temperatures. 
Details next on News Channel 25 WVTT.